Happy Sabbath! It's such a privilege to get together this morning and study God's Word. But before we do so, let's pray together. Because we need the presence of the Holy Spirit every time we open the Scriptures. So I invite you to pray with me. Dear God, this morning we come to your presence and we come to your Word. Because we hope to receive from you the message of salvation. Help us to understand the scriptures. Guide us as we study the text. And please be with us so that our discussion may lead us closer and closer to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning and uh, happy Sabbath happy to all. Sabbath. How are you today? Good. We <laughs> praise God for the Sabbath. Amen. Uh, this Sabbath day, uh, we're going to study our Sabbath school lesson. And uh, our Sabbath school lesson is focused on uh, the new topic for the fourth quarter of 2018. Mm. And the new topic is about the oneness in Christ. Mm -hmm. Oneness in Christ. That means uh, our Sabbath school lesson this quarter will uh, will talk about uh, unity, unity in the body of Christ. Okay, um, when we speak of unity in the body of Christ, okay, our our is the fundamental beliefs had this uh, adopted as one of the fundamental beliefs of the church. Mm. It, is in, it is in number 14 of our fundamental beliefs. Mm. So that means uh, the church uh, put importance on the unity of the body of, of Christ. Mm. That means this is very important. Okay? And uh, our, our lesson this quarter, our Sabbath school lesson this quarter, uh, starts the discussion of, of our quarterly lesson uh, right at the beginning in creation. Probably you may ask why. Why our Sabbath school lesson starts the discussion on unity of the church, unity of the believers uh, in creation. Okay, so um, we will uh, know uh, the reason in, in studying um, Genesis, the first few chapters of Genesis. Okay, so when we when we look at the first uh, for example uh, two chapters of genesis it's a genesis chapter one what does genesis chapter one uh, uh, talk about the account of creation creation right okay so uh, for example let us read Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and, and uh, 27. 
Genesis chapter 1. Nansan, can we read Genesis chapter 1 verses uh, 26 and 27? Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The expression in his own image has been debated by the theologians. There were many ideas about uh, creation in his own image. Uh, this could mean the, the human beings were created in the spiritual nature of God. Like, for example, God is holy, God is pure, and God is love. God, God's nature has been copied in the, human, in the creation of human beings. So, the emphasis of our author is that uh, the nature of God, that is love, could be seen in human beings, in the human beings that he created. Therefore, uh, love could be the foundation of unity in human beings. Because according to 1 John 4, what, what does it say? God is, God is, love. is love. Okay? So, it does not say God has love, mm. but God is love. That means the whole being of God is love. So, man reflects the character of, mm. of God. Therefore, in the beginning, God uh, put love okay, as the foundation of, of unity in the beginning. Okay? A man reflects the character of God because, because God, the triune God, also has unity. Have you noticed that in, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Let what does it say? Let us. Let us. That means there is unity there, you know, in creation. Uh, God has, in this passage, okay, has more than one person. Because he could not say to the angels, let us make man. You know, and because in verse 27, it says, uh, God, he created man in his image. Kindly, kindly read verse 27 to be exact. Okay. Okay, verse 27 once again. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You see, in, in, in verse 26, you could see there the plurality of God. But in verse 27, you could see the oneness of God. That means this uh, uh, God, you know, uh, is more than one person, but one. Okay? And this oneness should reflect in man. Okay? In man. That's why... Uh, uh, when we read Genesis chapter 2, kindly read. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. Kindly read. Roger. Yes. Genesis chapter 2, mm -hmm. verses. So Yahweh God made the man fall into a deep sleep, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and enclosed it in flesh. 
Jahwe God built the rib he had taken from the man into a woman mm -hmm. and brought her to the man. Mm -hmm. The man exclaimed, This at last is bone from my bones mm -hmm. and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, mm -hmm. for this was taken from man. Mm -hmm. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. You see, a uh, man and woman, two individuals, right? Two persons. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that these two persons became one. One. Unity. Wow. There is unity there. Mm -hmm. There is unity. There is harmony. And the foundation of the unity of man and woman is what? It's love. Love. Because you see, <laughs> Adam lo uh, has uh, love at first sight. Wow. <laughs> this woman, uh, bone of my bones. And I, is, uh, he was so amazed with the, with the woman. You see, he was in love. With a woman. So love is the foundation of what? Of unity and oneness in uh, the first human family. Right? Do you agree with me? Totally. Okay, good. So, therefore, in this context, we could say, we could say that when God said, let us make man in our own image, God wants the unity in the Trinity, you know, to be reflected also in the what? In the human beings that he created. Therefore, unity was God's creation in the very beginning of time. Mm. Unity. Unity is God's purpose. That's why our, our lesson says, the author of our lesson says, any attempt at understanding the nature of the unity in the church must begin with God's original plan at the creation and the need for restoration after the fall. That's why our lesson, the author of our lesson, begins the study of unity in Genesis. Because it was in Genesis that we could see the background that it was God who authored unity. Harmony and the foundation was what? Was love. Now, let us uh, go on. So, um, when we look at Genesis chapter 3, verses uh, uh, 16 to 19, and Genesis 4, 1 to 3, 1 to 5, I mean, uh, before these passages, of course, we know the story. Genesis chapter 3, yes. from verses chapter 1 to 15, yes. okay, that man fell into sin, okay? So, because of sin, take note, because of sin, what happened? Division. As far as the topic of unity is concerned. Division took place. Ah. Division, disunity, disharmony, okay, to, uh, began to exist. For example, um, Genesis chapter 3, verses uh, 12 to 13. <laughs> so, what was the result of, of the fall, of sin? Okay, can you read? Uh, come. Yes. Then the man said, The woman whom you give to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Okay. So, uh, is, there, <laughs> is there harmony and uh, love and unity there? No, no, no more. No. Because, because of you. Adam, you know, blamed his wife. Yes. In fact, he blamed God. Yes. The one huh? that you gave so, unity, take note, unity between, you know, uh, human beings horizontally was the result of, or what I mean, 
Yeah, unity is the result of unity vertically of man and God. Right? Okay. So now, uh, because of the fall, okay, now uh, man's unity with God was what? Was interrupted by? By sin. And as a result, sin also interrupted the unity of man with his, with his wife. Okay? And of course, consequently, uh, Cain and, and, and Abel in Genesis chapter 4. You know, instead of uh, loving each other, you know, uh, uh, Cain killed Abel. So, in the case of, uh, of Adam, he even blamed God. Right? Blamed the woman. And the woman also didn't uh, accept his, her fault. He, he, she also blamed what? The servant. Okay? Now, uh, kindly also read verses 17 to 18. Another result of, of sin or con, con, uh, consequences of sin in, in verses 17 to 18. Uh, Marcos. Yes. And to Adam, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistle is, uh, it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the plants of the field. So, what was the consequence of, uh, of sin? There's a curse. Okay, here in this passage, there was a, there was a curse. A curse of, of the earth, of, uh, of nature. That means uh, even, even the earth and its uh, creatures we what we're affected by, by sin. You see, even animals quarrel with each other, fight each other, mm. right? That's why this uh, term survival of the fittest. Yes. You know because uh, animals also fought each other and uh, kill each other, and the uh, mighty survives. Mm. Okay. And this was not from the beginning. This was the result of sin because curse is the earth. Okay. So that that was also. That means uh, disunity was not only among human beings, but even the uh, other creation, other creatures of God. Okay? Uh, animals. What else? Of course, uh, I already mentioned Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 15. Okay, what was the result of sin in, in that story? Broken relationship. Okay, socially. A broken relationship between brothers, okay. and of course, uh, uh, when we go further in, in Genesis chapter six, yes. what does it say? Uh, verse five. Genesis chapter six, verse five. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see, uh, sin is really terrible because it debased and it corrupted humanity so much that it uh, prompted God to what? To destroy, to judge. Uh, the antediluvian people with flood. Okay? Uh, you see, the, the, the result of, of sin, not only disunity, disharmony among human beings, but also wickedness. Okay? Wickedness. That's why uh, God wanted to restore to restore uh, man and or humankind into the original plan, his original plan. What was God's original plan? 
Unity. Unity. Yeah. Harmony. Love. Okay. Peace. Okay. So this is God's plan. However, Satan uh, wanted to destroy God's plan. Okay. So uh, throughout the sacred history in Genesis, uh, it, it was always God's plan to restore. Okay. That's why uh, uh, he called also Abraham to restore uh, to begin the process or, or to continue the process of restoration okay however before the time of Abraham uh, when when the descendants of Noah you see when the descendants of Noah uh, uh, multiplied she, uh, with, who were the children of Noah? Shem, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yes. Okay? And uh, they multiplied and became nations. According to Genesis chapter 10, right? Yes. 17 nations. Yes. Wow. And uh, according to, according to uh, Genesis chapter 11 verse 1, what does it say? Throughout the earth, men spoke the same language, okay. with the same vocabulary. Wow. <laughs> so, after the flood, again there was unity, right? Because, uh, because God destroyed the, the wicked people. And then he began, you know, to, uh, again his plan, to restore unity. So Noah and his sons, you know, were godly people. However, when they when they begot children and be, and multiplied, you know, uh, again disunity came in. Okay, disruption of God's plan came in again. Okay, but you know, uh, God's plan was for man to to spread the whole earth. That was God's plan. Okay, to be. Uh, uh, one world family, okay, united with each other. Imagine one language. They were one language, one speech. Wow. However, when we look at, uh, when we continue reading, there was a problem going on. In verses 2 to 4, let us read. Uh, Nonsense. And as people migrated from the earth, uh, the east, they found a plain in the land of Shina mm -hmm. and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and then burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in heaven and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth okay so now what was the what was the uh, story all about they wanted unity in verse 2 first verse 2 they what they journeyed uh, toward east. toward this, east. you know, some eastward. Some translation does not reflect the the Hebrew, the Hebrew text, because here, uh, the uh, the journey from the east. This is uh, this does not reflect the the Hebrew. It should be the journey eastward, eastward. because uh, the original uh, uh, population after the flood were what? Were in the mountain of Ararat, you know, in the yes, north. Yes. Okay. So therefore, it should be uh, the journey eastward, yeah. going to the plain of Shina. of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia that means uh, in the midst of uh, two rivers. Meso Meso is uh, midst, and then Potamia is river in Greek, mm. Potamos. Mm. Okay. So they traveled from the north, going to the uh, southeast, to southern Iraq now. Mm. Okay, Mesopotamia. Okay, now, 
Um, what was the original command of God to Noah's uh, children? Spread. To Noah? You spread the whole earth. In, fill the earth. In fact, this was also God's command to Adam, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Be fruitful and multiply and spread all throughout the earth. But these people had a different plan. <laughs> okay. What was the plan? Verse... Uh, 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 3 and 4 Verses 3 and 4 Come Let us You see <laughs> Notice God yes. said let us yes. They yes. also said let us mm-hmm. Wow They also want to have unity It seems uh, It seems that uh, they wanted unity here Okay Let us but, And then Let us uh, Make bricks, you know, in, in Mesopotamia, there, there were no stones, you know, only clay. So that's why they use uh, uh, clay and to make bricks and to build, you see? So, um, and in verse 4, what does it say? Again, come, let us, the same. What was the, what was the, the objecti- objective or purpose? Let us what? Make build, huh? build ourselves a city and a tower. So all we, uh, we all know that this tower was famously called Babel. Tower of Babel. Okay. Uh, let us make a city and a tower. Okay. The 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 uh, purpose. The purpose of the of these people. Why they came. Together to make a city and a tower. What was the plan of God? Spread. Okay, but their plan was congregate together in one place. So, is this uh, is this true unity? No, true unity is following God's command. That means this one is is only outward unity, not uh, true unity, not genuine unity. Okay. Uh, now, what else? What did he say? Uh, let's build ourselves a city and tower whose top is in in heaven. In other translation, that reaches to heaven. The word "reach" reach is not found in the Hebrew text. That's why here the, the translation uh, whose top is in heaven in the heavens is a is a appropriate translation of the Hebrew text. Okay? That means uh, they had a plan. Okay? That the, 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 the tower that they would build would be dedicated for what? Worship. For worship. Worship. Okay, whose top, uh, whose top is in the heavens. Heaven is the place of God. That means this, this, it has a religious connotation. Okay, because the word Babel, Babylon, is an Akkadian word, which means gate of the gods. Babylonian. Yes, yes, the gate of the gods. Okay, but of course, in the Hebrew language, Babel comes from the verb balal, which means to confuse. Okay, so in God's eyes, it is a, it's, it's not unity, it is confusion. Because they, their plan was not according to God's plan. Take note of that. Okay, that's why um, uh, the East Day Bible Commentary says, I would like to read, uh, According to the divine purpose, men were to have preserved unity through the bond of true religion. When idolatry and polytheism broke in the, this inner spiritual bond, they lost not only unity of religion, but also the spirit of brotherhood, a project such a tower to preserve by outward means 
the inward unity which has been lost could never succeed. According to is the Bible Commentary, Volume 1, uh, pages 284 to 85. Okay? So that means the, the religious, the religion of, of uh, ancient Babylon, okay, was not founded in, the, in God's true religion, but a false religion. It was a religion of idolatry, polytheism, the worship of the gods. Okay? So, uh, therefore, this is against God plan, God's plan. Okay? That was uh, the historical background. Okay? Uh, so, another, another purpose that uh, was really contrary to God's plan or, or the, the, the objective of building a tower, a city, was contrary to God's plan was, uh, was the, another motive that uh, came out uh, in, in Genesis 11, verse 4. What does it say? Let us make a what? A name. A name for ourselves. Let us make a name for ourselves. What does it, what does it imply? They wanted recognition. You know, they wanted to build, they wanted to be great. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be uh, known. You know, so worldwide. So that means th this ambition uh, comes from a proud heart. Proud heart, heart. I mean, they had this pride. Okay, that's the problem. Pride. Pride is the problem. You know, um, um, why it's it's uh, it's it's not according to God's plan. Because they wanted to be great by themselves, by their own efforts. Mm -hmm. Usually, when, we, when you read uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, uh, read Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, Marcos? And I will make you uh, and I will, will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great wow mm. so God told Abraham I will make you a great nation I will make your name great mm. you see in the immediate context you could see that that the the, 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 in, the people of ancient Babylon wanted to to make a name for themselves. Mm. But God said, no, that is not the, that is not the right way. Mm. I should be the one, not you, mm. that would make your name great. Mm. Okay? So, it is, it is not God's plan. God's plan is for him to make a person great. He wanted to show that through Abraham. Okay? Abraham became great. It's because God made him great. So if you make yourself great, it's not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of of the other, of the opposition of, of Satan. Because you see, Satan himself was first and foremost said to himself, I will what? Well, I will ascend to the stars. I want to sit in the mountain of the assembly. I want to be like God. You see, Satan or the spirit of making ourselves great is the spirit of Satan. That's why uh, in order to preserve unity in the church, we need to have the spirit of, of humility. Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, uh, there is a popular statement descending your way to greatness so why did Jesus why did God exalt Jesus Christ in, in Philippians chapter 2 yeah, I, that Jesus was exalted above every other uh, 
in the universe. Huh? He God exalted him. Mm. Why? Because, because he he came down. He descended. He descended to the level even of a servant. Mm. So the secret of being great is to be humble. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I think this is the problem of why people, why there is the disunity of the ch in the church today, or in in our society today, or in the world today. Mm. There is unity. There is disunity. I mean, disharmony. Why? Because uh, individuals wanted to what? Wanted to be great. Mm. You see why the disciples were fighting? Because <laughs> each one of them wanted to be great. Yes. Wanted to be great. You see, this was the problem of the people in the time of, you know, ancient Babylon. So, this was really uh, out of God's plan. Mm -hmm. So, God's plan is to be humble. Mm -hmm. To have unity is to be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, now, let's continue. Let's look at the life of Abraham. You know, since uh, God's was, God was on the process of, uh, of restoring unity in the world, mm. you know, this is the, the over plan, uh, over, uh, what is this, overall plan of God for the world to have harmony, to have unity, to have peace, founded in love. So he called Abraham, right? He called Abraham. And in the life of Abraham, you could see uh, four important uh, components or elements that uh, made Abraham an example of uh, of uh, of, uh, of unity. Okay, so in the life of Abraham, you could you could uh, glean. We can glean. Uh, some important characteristics of Abraham that would bring unity in the church, in the community, in the society, okay, and in the world. Okay, what are these uh, characteristics of Abraham? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse uh, 8. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8, can we read? Come. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would afterward receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. Okay. So, what was the uh, response of Abraham when God called him to go out of his country? By faith, Abraham... Obey. 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 So this is the first uh, characteristic of Abraham. Obedience. Okay? Obedience is one of the ingredients of unity in the church. Mm. If we obey God, God's uh, principles, God's way, okay? If we follow God's character, there will be unity in the church. Okay, obedience. Abraham obeyed. Mm -hmm. And because of, of his obedience, he, he went. Mm -hmm. no? But of course, the, the, the reason why he obeyed because of, of his what? Faith. Of his faith. Because of faith. You see, faith also is the foundation there of, of unity. Mm -hmm. Faith among the believers. Because without this faith, how can you obey God? Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, we need to have faith in order to have unity. Second, uh, verses uh, 9 and 10. Hebrews 11, verse 9 and 10. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, who designer and builder is God. 
Okay, so what does these uh, verses tell us about Abraham's character? He had hope. He hope in? You had hope in? God's promises. God's promises. Mm. Okay. Um, because, because of course of his faith, he obeyed. And because also of his faith, he had hope in God's promise. Mm. Okay. So this is one of the characteristics of, of uh, Abraham. That was that qualified him to be the father of faith, mm-hmm. because, of course, he uh, uh, Sarah was already uh, has has already passed her what mm-hmm. her menopause, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. but uh, still uh, Abraham believed, mm-hmm. okay, that uh, that God would give him a son. Mm-hmm. That is the that is the third characteristic. Third characteristic. And then the fourth characteristic, he trusted God's plan. That is found in, in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. I don't want you to read that anymore. It's a long story, but you know the story, right? Yes. That uh, Abraham, when God said to Abraham, Okay, Abraham, you sacrifice your son. Okay, because uh, after so many years, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham. What was the promise of God? In, in, that is in that is our key text. Yes. Uh, Genesis chapter 15. Let's read the key text now. The key text in Genesis chapter 15 verses 5 to 6. Okay. Uh, Roger, kindly read. Then taking him outside, he said, Look up to heaven and count the stars if you can. Such will be your descendants, he told him. Abraham put his faith in Yahweh, Mm -hmm. who counted this as making him justified. Wow. You see... um, what was the promise of God to Abraham? Uh, when God brought him outside, okay, look at Abraham. Look at the stars. Can you? Can okay. You count? Can you count them? Mm. You know, I will. Uh, your, your, your descendants will be like the stars. Okay. Uh, that was God's uh, promise to Abraham. He said, you shall, uh, so shall your descendants be like the un, uh, unnumbered stars. So did God fulfill his promise? Yes. Yes. By giving a miraculous uh, baby, Isaac. Mm. You know the story. Mm. Miraculous baby because, you know, we were too old to, the, the, the wife was too old, Sarah was too old to, bear a son okay but with God nothing is impossible, impossible. Amen. Mm. so believing in God even is already impossible is what is a manifestation of what of great faith mm. but in the story of of uh, 22 uh, what I mean Genesis 22 uh, the test of God for Abraham was what? To give up. Was uh, very extreme. Mm. Imagine, how come? You give me only one son. Mm. And, and you said that through my seed, okay, uh, my descendants would be great, would be, numer- uh, would be numberless. But now, God has to offer mm. his son. But what was the response of Abraham? Okay, Lord, I don't probably, you know, I, w- I could just imagine. Uh, the, probably Abraham would say, Lord, I don't understand what you say. Why? You know, why would you ask me? This is the only son that you gave me and now you want me to offer this. But Lord, since you are the one who... 
uh, is for asking me to do this, I will do it. Because in, in, in Hebrews, Abraham believed that God would what? is able to what? to resurrect Isaac from the dead. So this is a manifestation, or that was a manifestation of great faith, extreme faith in the part of Abraham. Now, uh, so uh, Abraham trusted God's plan of salvation, although he sometimes didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So this is also a lesson for us, mm -hmm. that uh, we need to trust God. That sometimes we don't understand God's ways. We need to trust Him. Mm. Okay? So, um, uh, these characteristics of Abraham uh, qualified him to be what? To be the father of faith. God's people. And faith is the foundation of what? <laughs> it's also one of the foundation because love, mm. faith. Mm -hmm. Again, here faith is the, also one of the foundations of unity. Mm. You know? Why, why are we uh, one in the church? Why we come together? You are a Cuban. You are a Burmese. Malaysian. Malaysian. Burmese. I am a Filipino. <laughs> why we are here? Why are we united? It's because of, of faith. In Christ. Faith in Christ. Amen. Without this faith in Christ and without love for one another, we could not stay together. For a long time because we have different cultures, different mindset, mm. right? But because of love Amen. and faith Amen. in Christ Jesus, we become one. Amen. 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 And this is God's plan. That is why the last part of our lesson, God called the people. Mm. Israel. Mm. Okay? And uh, I think uh, we don't have enough time anymore. Okay? <laughs> But uh, Israel was also called by God, mm. the descendants of Abraham, to continue the character of their forefather. Mm. The character of what? Of obedience, of hoping, hoping on God's promises, mm. and what else? Trusting in God, believing in God, no matter what. Mm. Okay? That through Israel, the knowledge of God and, uh, and uh, unity would be, would spread all throughout the world through his people in the Old Testament. However, Satan also thwarted God's plan. You know, we are in the context also of the great controversy, oh, yes. right? Mm. But ultimately, God fulfilled his plan through one seed of Abraham. Mm. Who was that? Jesus Christ mm. right through Jesus Christ we are now united mm. different nations different races different culture different mindset okay we are united through Abraham's seed Jesus Christ mm. and these last days we also are called by God the remnant church mm. to be the agent of what? Of unity, of mm. harmony mm. in the world. Mm. So the question is, are you God's agent of unity in the church? Mm. Are we God's agent of unity in our community? We need humility. Yes. We need love. We need humility. Mm. We need faith. Mm. And we need, of course, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In our hearts Amen. to have unity in the church. So, uh, this is my prayer, brothers and sisters, uh, those who are listening, of course, sisters, because here all brothers, <laughs> that uh, uh, in order to be agents of unity in the world, because this is God's plan, in these last days, mm. we need to have Jesus Christ in our hearts, like Abraham. We need Jesus Christ in our hearts. This is my prayer. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the lesson that you have brought to us through this uh, study. 
We pray, Lord, that uh, you help us through the power of the Holy Spirit to be united in your church. Although we came from different races, different uh, tongues, different culture, and different nations, but through Jesus Christ, you united us in this church. And we pray that uh, Jesus Christ would reign in our hearts so that the church would be united in these last days to fulfill your purpose to also spread this uh, good news of salvation, of unity, of love, of faith to the world so that people may accept also Jesus and will have peace, will have love, will have faith, and will have unity among themselves so that the world will be a better place to live in for each one of us. But if not, Lord, this is our prayer that you will bring us to that new heaven and new earth where we're in. There will be complete and perfect unity. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.